Kishu Kusnam, Kishu Kuke, Kishu Kosh Quiet, Kapaneskes. Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Kansuke Tasmia. And uh, it's been a, an amazing week. It has been. You know, I've had a lot of ups and ups and a few downs. And that's normal in life. And uh, people tend to forget that that's what life is about. About ups and downs. You know, people always think that it's just supposed to be up, 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 up. And you have to have that descend in order to have gratitude. In order to understand what it feels to have joy from that gratitude so if you are on that that downturn right now just remember that life has balances to it and good things are going to come your way eventually it usually takes two times the amount of quote unquote bad things to happen over the good things. And uh, this week, I've had a lot of time to reflect. And there's there's points in my life where I'm getting to now, where I, where I have that feeling of imposter syndrome. You know, like you you everyone has it as well, where you feel like you're not good enough to be in a situation like you feel like it's not meant for you you know when you reflect and then you downgrade yourself and down water yourself down and water your achievements down and water the things you've overcome in life down and what I started to realize is everyone feels this Everyone, you know, from the famous celebrities that you follow to movie actors, to musicians, to sports athletes, to to everyone. Everyone has that self-doubt. And it's a normal thing. And when I started to understand that, it made it a lot easier to get out of those predicaments and those situations because as I as I meet more people and as I sit there and I talk and I share with people who aren't from the indigenous community on the things that we go through and the things that we see on a day-to-day basis some people are just they're just blown away on how how I'm even here just functioning and doing what I'm doing in life. And some of these things I'm going to share may not be for me to share. So I won't go into full details. But, you know, I just want to show you an aspect of my life and which has made me really think about where I'm at in life. And it gives me more gratitude for where I'm at, even. And I may not where be where I want to be. But I'm a lot further away from where I don't want to be. And what do I mean by that? I have a really close cousin who was one of my best friends for most of my life. Growing up. Um, we did we did a lot together. You know, we got into trouble all the time. We would hang out all the time. You know, he was one of my best friends from when I was a little kid. From what I remember, he was. You know, I was always hanging out with him, always visiting him, always around him, always. And then as you, as you grow up, you know, sometimes you you kind of shift away. But for the most most part, 
we remain pretty good friends throughout my whole even my teen years majority of my life until I was about 16 17 we kind of started to drift off a bit and kind of veer our own ways and we have veered so far apart from each other it's crazy to think that this is someone that I, I once like you know was one of my best friends my cousin and uh, he is homeless lives out on the streets addicted to to hard drugs I don't know exactly what hard drug he's addicted to but he's addicted to some hard drugs and I guess recently I was I was talking with my my adopted mom because she adopted his daughter my niece and then his sister um, her sister who adopted him which is my auntie you know they live they live pretty close to each other so they they talk a lot and they you know they live basically above each other their neighbors and she was just telling me that he he was in the hospital and he was in the hospital I guess about about two weeks ago now because he overdosed and I guess they probably had to revive him and bring him back to life and then last week he was in the hospital because he has a, an, an infection in his feet he has I guess <coughs> ingrown toenails and they're just so severely infected because he doesn't take care of himself that they were falling off and and his feet were just swollen and he couldn't walk so they had to put him on some antibiotics and then I when I was talking to my my adopted mom about this after I got off the phone I just thought wow you know like I just and this is just one family member out of multiple people throughout my family that are in this same predicament that are addicted to drugs homeless on the streets you know my little brother is the same way he's he was in the exact same town as well um i have an auntie i have another auntie who lives in the states who is so far gone that she basically has to use a tube to breathe and eat because they she was shooting up in her neck so much that something happened and they had to do surgery and they kind of messed up on the surgery with her and I have little cousins who were in their teens late teens that, that are addicted to these drugs as well and I have a sister who lives in Lethbridge, Alberta and I haven't seen her in maybe 12 years and I, and I talk to her once in a while whenever she jumps on Facebook and when I, I'll message her and, and it takes like sometimes it takes weeks to months to one time it was even like two years before she got back to me so I don't know how she's doing I don't know what's going on and I was recently in Lethbridge too a few times and and I know she struggles with with money and income and I just did I say hey you know come out to the powwow hang out with me you know I, I haven't seen you in a long time it would be good to reconnect you know it would be good to just hang out and I said I'll pay for it and and she never gets back to me until I'm already gone and I know I know she's been in and out of jail and struggling and she lost her partner many years ago who she was I guess madly in love with and he he passed away which is so ironic because this world is this world is so small that I guess she was um, she was with um, a 
another in indigenous actor that I know. He's he's getting pretty well known. His name is uh, Gene Brave Rock. So my little sister was with Gene Brave Rock's younger brother, and he passed away. And I just recently discovered this that that was his little brother. My sister was madly in love with him, and she still hasn't been able to get over it. I think. And I don't know the full details on what happened, so I can't share on that. But I know she, she still mourns him. And I was just thinking about myself. I'm like, wow. Here I am, sober. I have all these these eagle feathers. I have food in my stomach. I'm healthy. I'm grateful most of the time. And I, I'm, lear I'm learning some of my language. I have an, a, a place I love living at. You know, I have a vehicle. I have these things. And people that I know that I've grown up with don't have any of this. And I started to feel like an imposter, you know, like, this wasn't, this wasn't, this isn't meant for me. But then I realized, you know, I have to, I have to feel that and experience that. But then I also have to remember the good that I'm doing as well by showing them that life can get better if you try. Life can always get better if you want it to. Life will do whatever you want it to do. You know, time is irrelevant. You could be doing one thing and it seems like time just passes by. And then you could be doing something else and it just feels like time is dragging on, like it's taking forever. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed at all. Maybe the, the environment, whatever, right? But that same concept of time is still the same, still ticks, second by second. That second doesn't speed up or slow down. It's on how we're pursuing or perceiving life in that moment. And I just reflected on this, and you know, and I, and I understood that the work that I am doing is needed. And it just gave me a whole different perspective on life. Like where I could actually be at. You know, if I never chose to get sober, like I've mentioned many times before, I don't even know if I would be alive today. Because that's how far into depression I was getting through alcohol. So you, you might be in that realm as well. And to know and understand that you're going to feel like an imposter, especially when you start out doing something new. Because your mind, your subconscious mind, loves taking the easiest route possible. Your subconscious mind does not like change because then that means it has to use energy to learn something new. So your mind will do whatever it can to play tricks on yourself, to make you feel like an imposter, to make you feel like you're not worthy, to make you not go through with it. And once you understand these things, and once you understand that everyone feels like an imposter at the beginning of anything, and people still feel like imposters no matter where they're at, and I still feel like imposters, like I just talked about. You know, sometimes when I'm dancing, one times that sometimes I show up to a powwow, and I feel like an imposter. You know, I feel like, man, I don't, I don't deserve to be out here with all these amazing dancers. And it's going to happen from time to time. 
But when you can step back and reflect on all the things that you've overcome to get to that situation, it grounds yourself. It brings yourself back to that moment and it allows you to overcome that imposter system, that imposter syndrome. And that's what I do now. I just reflect on everything that I've overcome to get to where I'm at in life. And it gives me that gratitude to say, hey, you deserve this. You are worthy of this space. Because, you know, they say it takes one out of a hundred trillion chances of being born. Did you know that? If you are new to my podcast, I've talked about that before. It takes one out of 400 trillion chances to be born. And to know and understand your family tree is even more mind-blowing. That your parents had to meet up at the right time. And then your great, then your grandparents on each side of your family had to meet at the right time. And then your great, great grandparents, you know, throughout the family tree, they all had to meet at that exact time and have a child at that exact moment for you to be born. And then that goes for your kids, if you have kids and great grandchildren and so on and so on. So life is a gift. You're a gift to this earth. Just remind yourself that when you feel like an imposter, you are worthy of this space. You are. So I truly hope you got something from this podcast. I hope something just clicked for you, something helped you. And to know that you're not alone when this feeling comes up, that everyone else in the world feels it too, that just gives you that assurance that it's okay. And we, if depending on where you where you listen to this or you tune in, if you tune in on this on YouTube, we just hit a massive milestone. I finally, after some time, I used to just upload videos before and not take them seriously. Like on YouTube, I was just doing it as a record. I would kind of upload here and there, but it's been on my, my goal list this year to hit a thousand subscribers and get monetized. And that happened today for me, which is phenomenal. So thank you all for the support, Sukuni, because it, it's truly appreciated. You're my day ones. You're all the OG supporters, the OG warriors out there. And together we can make a change. You know, when we turn me into we, we're a lot stronger together. So share this with someone that you know who's starting out something new, who needs that encouragement to push past their limiting fears, their, their limiting beliefs. Because this is what they just might need to hear. So with that, I'm going to end this podcast. Have an amazing week. Take care. Sukuni Dagas. And if you do watch this on YouTube, please like and subscribe because I also do upload powwow vlogs and powwow clips. All right. Take care. See you next Wednesday. And remember, everything always happens for the right reasons.